Hi, thanks for joining me in another video today. I frequently get asked the question, how long does it take to charge up your car? And there are quite a few answers to that question. There's a whole range of charging rates with some charging as fast as a few minutes. However, there are many factors that play into it, like which car you own, what level of charging you're using, your state of charge, and others. So let's go over the different ways to charge and some of the factors that play into your charging time. Big thanks to Climate Exchange for sponsoring today's video. Win a fully customized EV worth up to $112,000 or cash prizes in their eighth raffle. They cover all taxes, home charging setup, and help order your dream car. Climate Exchange is a nonprofit connecting people across the country, all working to pass state level climate policies. They know EVs are important, and the proceeds from this raffle help fund their work. There are only two weeks left to buy tickets. Sales end February 27th, and winners are drawn February 29th. Buy tickets at carbonraffle.org or click on the link in my description. Good luck. Let's talk about levels of charging first and then get into some examples. For North America, when talking about charging, you'll often hear the term level 1, 2, or 3. These are generic terms to describe your charging speed, with 1 being the slowest and 3 being the fastest. It's also important to recognize that charging time does not equal waiting time, and in most scenarios, your charging time is irrelevant. So what are these levels? I'll go into each one of these in detail, but let's get some quick definitions out of the way. Level 1 is when you're charging using a standard household outlet. It's the slowest option. Level 2 is charging off a higher power outlet or a dedicated charger. The third, DC fast charging, is what you'd be doing on a road trip, so an example would be a Tesla supercharger or Electrify America station. Let's start with level 2. It's the simplest to understand. It also has the least nuance to it and is the best option for charging your car on a regular basis. These are normally 240 volt outlets, so similar to an outlet you'd plug in your dryer or electric stove into. They can also come in different forms like a built-in wall unit, or you might see them outside at a shopping center or a park. With level two, you can get approximately 20 to 80 miles per hour, depending on the capabilities of your car and the charger. This one will get your car to your desired charging percentage in just a few hours. Typically, people do their level two charging at night while they're asleep. This is where that difference between charging time and waiting time comes in. Just because it takes five hours for your car to charge up at home doesn't mean you're sitting in the garage watching it. You just plug in and go on with your day. Level one charging is the slowest and it's what most people have readily available in their home. These are normally 120 volt outlets, the kind you'd plug your standard electronics into. These work best if your commutes are shorter. Again, with level one charging, you'd be plugging in to charge up overnight. If your workplace has level one charging provided, you can charge during work hours, which is an added bonus. You can expect to get around 40 miles per night, so it's not the greatest, but it does work for an average commute and it's using electrical equipment that's already available. The final charging level is level three, other known as DC fast charging. These chargers are mostly used when traveling long distances and they're more expensive than charging up at home. If you live in an apartment or have a living situation where you're not able to charge, these chargers will be how you fuel up. These stations today will range from 25 kilowatts up to 350 kilowatts of power. With the fastest charging cars out there, you can charge 10 to 80% in less than 20 minutes. DC fast charging is fantastic for road trips, but there are more variables at play than level one or two. Things like battery temperature, state of charge, and overall car capability can affect charging performance. Let's put some examples on our chart for electric vehicles. These are numbers based on the manufacturer's stated rates. Unfortunately, the manufacturers each report them differently, either by miles or percentage. These are what is expected to get from the vehicle, but will vary based on environmental factors. The Chevy Bolt EV is one of the slower charging cars based on max charging rates. The Bolt on a DC fast charger can get 100 miles in 30 minutes using a 50 kilowatt charger. While that may sound nice, it really isn't that quick considering it has 259 miles of range. The VW ID4 can do 10 to 80% in about 30 minutes with a 170 kilowatt plus charger. The Tesla Model 3 rear wheel drive gets up to 175 miles in 15 minutes using a 170 kilowatt plus charger. Our last example is the Hyundai Ioniq 6, which charges 10 to 80% in 18 minutes using a 350 kilowatt charger. These charging times are something to look for when purchasing a car. Again, your actual charging time and rates are going to vary from what is listed depending on a few things. Here are some factors that will play into this. As we saw from our examples, the max charging rate for each vehicle will vary. EVs are built with different battery options and capacities. A modern Nissan LEAF has a 40 or 60 kilowatt hour battery, while a bigger vehicle like a Ford F-150 Lightning has a battery of 98 or 131 kilowatt hours in size. Having a bigger battery typically means you can charge at higher rates. 
outside temperature can also affect your charging rate. If it's really cold out, your car will need some time to heat up the batteries. If your vehicle hasn't had time to warm up the battery pack, your charging rate is going to start off low. Luckily, many vehicles come with a preconditioning function to prepare your car for charging. Now that we know most of the components of charging, let's talk about a vehicle state of charge and a charging curve. The state of charge is a measure to show the remaining energy in the battery pack at any given time. It's basically a fancy term for battery percentage. When it comes to fast charging, the charging speed isn't linear. The charging speed tends to slow down as the state of charge increases. For instance, when your car hits 50 or 60%, your charging speed will slow down. This is also why it's courteous to set your max charge to 80%. If you're charging to 100%, you're going to be there for a while and people might be waiting to charge behind you. When graphing out the DC charging rate of a car, they typically take the shape of a curve, though this isn't always the case. A charging curve represents the variation in speed while you're charging. It illustrates how the charging rates changes at different states of charge. It happens in every vehicle and you don't see it unless you graph it out, but some stations like EVgo actually show it on their screen or in the app. For most of the cars we review, we do charging tests to validate the claims of the manufacturers. You can see our charging graphs typically towards the end of our videos in the charging segment. Here's an example of a 2023 Rivian R1S with the large packs charging curve. We plugged the car in at 90% and it really held a high charging rate around the 200 kilowatt range. It finally hit a peak of 250 kilowatts around 38%. Once it hit 42%, it started to gradually slow down. We ended the charging session at 80% and at that point it was charging at 76 kilowatts. It took us 35 minutes to charge 19 to 80%. I think this is a good example of what a nice charging curve looks like. One thing that a charging curve graph can display is that having the highest peak charging rate isn't everything. Take this graph from the 2023 Lucid Air Grand Touring for example. It's one of the cars with the highest peak rates we've ever seen, charging over 300 kilowatts. Unfortunately, during our test, it couldn't sustain these rates and slowed down quickly after hitting that peak. So peak charging rate isn't necessarily an indicator of how fast a car can charge up. A charging curve, however, is important to optimize charging times and it can influence your overall experience as an electric vehicle user. So that was a lot of information for a simple question, but the answer isn't so straightforward. In a summarized answer, it depends on your vehicle's state of charge, outside temperature, charging station power, and other factors. If charging at home is an option for you, then this is going to be the most convenient way to fill up your EV. You just plug in and go about your usual day or night activities. When you're on the road, charging up to 100% is hardly ever necessary. You'll most likely be topping off at 80%. Staying between 20 and 80% is a sweet spot for EVs. Thanks for spending time with me today. Support our channel and check out our Kaya sticker shop, Kai's My Dog, and follow us on social media at Kai's EV. Have an EV I can review? Email me at info at That's all for now, and happy charging.